The conference championship matchups are all set now for this year. We have the Bengals facing the Chiefs. We've got the 49ers facing off with the Eagles. Uh, four of the big six we discussed throughout this entire year. And honestly, it was kind of fun that the final six teams remaining after the Saturday games were the big six we had discussed down the stretch of this season. So to see that play to fruition was pretty fun. It had the Bengals uh, pull off that money line upset. Had the Bengals 8-1 to one Super Bowl tickets still available. A fun day in the NFL for sure. But now we spin things forward to the conference championships and we've got to figure out how to handle this Patrick Mahomes injury. And it's not easy by any means. I am trying to account for it. We're going to discuss my process in doing so, discuss what I'm seeing in that game, discuss the Eagles game as well, and let you know my first look at the conference championship lines over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com here to get, take a look at the conference championship betting markets over at FanDuel Sportsbook, let you know where I'm seeing value, how I'm adjusting for the Mahomes injury, how much of an impact it makes my model, and uh, get you set for those. We'll also take a look back at uh, last week's show and recap another good week for the podcast later on. We'll dive into all that here in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Big week coming this week. We got more PGA coming up with Brandon Gadula tomorrow. We'll also talk some NBA. Tom Vecchio talking to NBA NHL on Wednesday. Our full conference championship preview will be Thursday and talking player props for the conference championships on Friday. To get all of that right as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. All these shows do go up on the FanDuel YouTube page after the fact as well. The NFL playoffs are here, and the easiest way to get into the action is with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props plus you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So, football fans, don't miss out. Place your $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment more a FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-89-9789. So the big storyline of this week here will be Patrick Mahomes' health. So I wanted to run through what my numbers say, both if I assume that he's fully healthy, which I'm not going to, and after I make an adjustment with him being banged up. If I run things with no adjustment, just run things straight based on each team at their current health, assuming healthy Mahomes, I have the bank or the, the Chiefs favored by 5.2 in my one model and 2.75 in the other. The other one is lower. We've talked about this before. The reason the one is lower is because it expects regression from them on late downs. That hasn't happened yet. So that's probably why that model has not back tested as well. Uh, that one has a higher correlation to the market, but the other one has had uh, better back testing results, better mean squared error, uh, better ROI down the stretch this year as well. So I trust that one more. If I have healthy Mahomes, total in the game is 50.7 for me. Right now, the market has it as KC minus one and a half with the total at 47 and a half. So obviously, pretty big difference from what I have. So if I run this straight, it would show a lot of value on Kansas City and on the over. But I think we can say with a lot of certainty that if Mahomes does play, he's not going to be full Mahomes, fully healthy, running around, making plays, doing all that Mahomes magic. So I have to adjust for that. 
it's hard to know how much to adjust for it, given that it is a diminished version of the same quarterback. So I put in what I think was a pretty substantial adjustment, both to their passing offense and the rushing offense. The rushing offense is because the Bengals can focus more on stopping the run, allocate more resources there, Mahomes, less lethal with his legs, picking up first down, scrambling and stuff like that. So I think it's important to adjust both those things down and also adjusting their pass to run ratio up a bit to where I expect him to throw or to run a bit more. When I do that, I get the Chiefs favored by 2.9 in one model and 2.1 in the other. That brings the total down to 48.3. So even with, I think, I think pretty big adjustments in for Mahomes and his health, I'm still showing value in both the Chiefs and the over, just not as much. So the question becomes, do I trust those numbers? Do I trust my process enough to bet them at this point in the week? And I think I do to an extent. I'm not going full there because a little bit of value on the over, not enough. Um, it's within a point of the, of the total. Um, you know, 47 is a key number. Uh, if it hits 47, that's an under. So I'm not super anxious to go there. So I'm just going to take the money line on the Chiefs. I have their win odds at 60%. Um, the implied odds at minus 116 or 53.7%. That's a big enough gap for me to take it. It also means the impact of a a... Mahomes injury can be bigger and I'd still show value. So I have wiggle room of about six percentage points to be wrong, to be underestimating the impact of this injury. And I would still be okay and have it a fair bet on the chiefs. I've been on the Bengals for a while now, as we discussed last week, I had their money line, had the spread, had the under in that game because of their defense. I do have that eight to one ticket for them to win the super bowl. I think they're a very fun team that I love rooting for. But I do think there's value in the Chiefs right now. So I'm trying my hardest to ding the Chiefs for Mahomes not being fully healthy, but the infrastructure around him, and by that I mean Andy Reid, basically. Andy Reid, a good offensive line now, Travis Kelsey, stuff like that. The infrastructure makes it harder to ding them more than I already have. So in that game, I will stick with the Chiefs money line at minus 116. You can get minus 115 at some other spots as well. So shop around as always, but I'll stick to just the money line here. I'm going to stay away from the total because again, if they decide to go more run heavy than even I'm projecting, that could skew things even more. So um, sticking with the Chiefs money line for right now. In the other game, I'm also showing value in a money line. That's the 49ers at the Eagles. Eagles right now, two and a half point favorites of FanDuel Sportsbook. And I'm going to take the 49ers money line at plus 122 against the Eagles. If I look at my primary model, I have the 49ers as slight favorites in this game. And I'm surprised by that because that model has been fine at the Eagles all year. Um, it's shown no real issues with them. I haven't been betting against the Eagles a whole bunch, especially when Hertz has been healthy. I did bet against them a couple times without him, but um, I, that model does like them and I like them personally. But the 49ers machine on both offense and defense has unreal efficiency numbers, even when you adjust for not playing the toughest schedule so far. And it's important to note, I think at least, that I'm not adjusting the 49ers up based on what they've done since the Christian McCaffrey trade or since they, what they've done with Brock Purdy at quarterback. I'm not adjusting them up. I think that like, if you're thinking realistically, they would go down, but their numbers have been better. The only adjustment in this game that I've made is adjusting the Eagles up to scrub out the two games with Gardner Minshew at quarterbacks. Their efficiency did dip there. He's not playing. I shouldn't care about him. So the only adjustment in this game is bumping up the Eagles. But even then, it still loves the 49ers. So specifically, I will take the money line here, plus 122. The spread is two and a half. My fear there is that if the Eagles get up early, they can roll. We saw that on Saturday night where they got a lead and then it was game over real fast. I do not trust Brock Purdy in a negative game script. It, in general, Kyle Shannon offenses, if they're forced into a true dropback situation, they do lose efficiency there. So don't trust Purdy. Don't trust the scheme in a negative game script. I don't trust anybody to stop the Eagles when they're up big either. So I'm not going to take the two and a half. And I'd also note that's important if you are, let's say you like the 49ers and the Bengals. You want to tease both those teams, tease the uh, 49ers to eight and a half, tease the Bengals seven and a half. I don't want I don't want that here because of the way this game could play out if the Eagles were to get up. I can see that happening very easily. So just the money line for me. Total here is 45 and a half. 
I have it at 44.9 in part because there is some potential wind in this game. So no big value there, at least not enough for me to bet it. It's not going to be fun this entire week rooting against Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts. Um, Burrow has made me a good amount of money this year. Hurts is someone who my prospect model likes coming out a lot. Uh, I like him a lot personally, so it's not fun to root against him. But if you want action on the NFL in the conference championship week, you got to bet against somebody fun. So I am following what my models are saying, following where my numbers are. And both models do think that the Chiefs and the 49ers are undervalued. So I will go that way and ride with it as as tough as this week may be. I do think that's the way to go. So as of right now, the two bets and locking in this week are the Chiefs money line at minus 116 and the 49ers money line at plus 122. Again, shop around to make sure you get the best number on those. You can also look around um, if you want to shop like correct matchup for Super Bowl. Um, it's plus 310 at FanDuel Sportsbook for the uh, 49ers versus the Chiefs. I would note that if you just parlay the two money lines together, it's plus 313. So make sure you try both routes if you're doing that. But um, I think that those are the way I'm seeing things as of right now. That's our first look at the NFL and the conference championships. We'll have a full breakdown of both those games coming up on Thursday with Ryan Williams getting his read on them, seeing if he disagrees with me, maybe we can get into back the Eagles or something. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But Ryan last week had a great week and the entire podcast again, really good week. We had a good stretch the past month or so here on the show. Let's recap what went down this past week here on the podcast. Our Thursday guest was Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. He had three and one on the week. The hits for him. He had the Jags plus eight and a half. They, of course, uh, lost that game by seven, kicked the field goal to cover. That was good. Uh, he got the Jags plus eight and a half. He had the Eagles minus seven and a half. Never a doubt on that one. Same thing. You know, they get up, they can roll. They're a very good offense. And then the 49ers minus three and a half uh, in that one against the Cowboys last night. The lone miss for Ryan was the Bills Bengals over at 48 and a half. Uh, Bengals defense played great. We had the snow in that game. So, Three and one week for Ryan, another good week for him. He's had a good year overall, so no surprise in that one. All of my action last week was in that Bills Bengals game. Didn't get good closing line value, but won everything. Um, I had the Bengals money line at plus 198, scaled with the spread where I'd profit as long as I covered. Kind of wish I'd put more in the money line, but I know why I did it. Five was a big number, and that was part of the motivating factor. It did get to five and a half, so. I did not get the best number. Uh, the money line, I believe, closed at 205 or 200. Um, so it could have gotten a better number there. But I always felt that we were overvaluing the offensive line injuries, given how well the Bengals have played through injuries to Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, everyone throughout this year. And that's how things played out. And the Bengals defense played well, too. Um, I also had the under in that game at 50 and a half. It got to... 48 and a half, like right after we talked, uh, went back up to 49 and a half, then closed back down at 48 and a half. I didn't see it playing out the way it did, uh, but it was a, a touch high for me. It was in part because of weather. I thought it'd be, there'd be more wind when we talked about that on Tuesday. Didn't wind up being windy, just a lot of snow, but either way, weather was a factor in that under. So, um, three, zero across those bets with the scaling, or if you want to go two and zero based on the scaling of the, that one, but either way, I felt good, good about my read on that game. Um, I thought we might, we might be overlooking the Bills' issues on offense they've had recently, and we saw that play out. So it's good when the thought process, when the numbers align, and when those play out in reality as well. Our guest in the player prop show last week was Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Not shockingly, another great week for Tom. Uh, I didn't total these up, but... He went seven and three, including one of the hits being a Dallas Goddard in time touchdown at plus 195. He also had Goddard over 51 and a half receiving yards in that same game. Uh, a good one for Tom uh, kind of got by by the skin of his teeth, but Isaiah Pacheco under 12 and a half rush attempts. He finished with 12 exactly. Could have gone awry with them going more run heavy with Mahomes being banged up, but he finished with 12 on the button. So a uh, good hit there as well. Tom had Jalen Hurts under 51 and a half rushing yards, finished in the 30s in part because of the script, which is something Tom mentioned. He had Josh Allen over 35 and a half pass attempts. Now he said he wanted to get to 36 and a half because it was minus 142, I believe, on the over 35 and a half. I'm not sure if it ever got there. I didn't check back again on Sunday mornings. I didn't have a lot of interest in this market personally, but Allen finished with 42. So if you got a 35 and a half, it's a win. If you did get 36 and a half, win there as well. The juice changed either way uh, over for Allen in that one. 
Tom had Devin Singletary under 43 and a half rushing yards. I think he had about 24, 25 on six rush attempts. And then he had Ezekiel Elliott under 35 and a half rushing yards. Despite Tony Pollard missing the entire second half, Zeke saw just 26. So easy win there for Tom. Misses were Debo Samuel over 75 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Trevor Lawrence over 250 and a half passing yards. And then, uh, the 49ers at defense, anytime touchdown at plus 650. So seven and three for Tom. One of the hits was a plus 195 anytime touchdown. One of the misses, a plus 650 anytime touchdown. Good week by Tom once again. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Um, on the PGA side of things, we have Brandon Gadula on. You can find him on Twitter at Gadula13. He'll be running simulations for uh, this week at Torrey Pines. We'll talk to him tomorrow on the show to talk more PGA. Two outrights for Brandon last week and three top tens for the American Express. Outrights were Cameron Young and Sung J M. Uh, John Rob won. He was plus 550. I think he's 350 now this week, uh, which is pretty nuts. Uh, neither of those hit, but uh, one of the top tens did. That was Taylor Montgomery at plus 410 to finish top 10. Finished fifth, solo fifth, so a full win there. Uh, no split season on that one. Others were Aaron Wise and Taylor Pendrith, um, and those did not hit. But depends on how you scaled it, which bets you out of taking. But nice hit with Montgomery for Brandon. He's done a good job of pinpointing longer shot top 10 bets the past couple of weeks. So excited to have Brandon on once again uh, on tomorrow's show. Now that I have more time during the week, I've been betting more PGA matchups, which has been kind of fun. So maybe we'll... Uh, Quiz Brandon on some of those. We have him on tomorrow as well. Get his thoughts on them. See if I'm a dummy. Um, had a big sweat this week with Wyndham Clark over Ricky Fowler. Clark was up two shots, had a bogey, and was up one shot, and then double bogey consecutive holes, and then had a rally with a birdie, eagle, birdie to get the win over Fowler. So I had a lot of fun with that. Looking forward to doing more of those, and we'll talk to Brandon again tomorrow to get his read on this week's PGA Tour event. That's all we have for today, though, here on the show. Again, a bit nervous about the NFL stuff for this week, but the numbers have done very well recently, this entire year. Honestly, the, the ROI is, uh, is is looking good, so going to trust it. Going to close my eyes, see what happens, but I think it'll be a fun week of NFL for sure. We'll get the full breakdown for that later on this week to get that. And all of our shows, as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread. Wherever you get your podcast. you can also uh, check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page if you prefer to watch the video version of these shows. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 